Uh, I'm Brogan Ballas. <laughs> all right. So we all we all remember high school. Right? It's every without fail, within a few weeks of freshman year starting, every student had found some sort of group they could identify with. Some of these groups varied from school to school, school to school. One that was always there, one of the constants, was the band nerds. <laughs> and regardless of nerds were always perceived as a little weird. But for most, this weirdness was short-lived because after graduation, music usually became less about who you were than a hobby. But there's always those few. The few that can't accept music as a hobby because for them, music isn't just what they do, it's who they are. And for most of these, weird doesn't nearly do it justice <laughs> because most of these, their love of music, comes together with what most of us would consider mental illness. I know this is a really controversial subject. I know a lot of you find it hard to believe that a person can be a better musician simply because they're missing a brain Lego, as my friend puts it. <laughs> this isn't hard for me to believe because I'm schizophrenic. And as a musician, I have seen how my condition has affected me. I've always corrected people that call me a songwriter because I don't write music, I hear it. I hear it all around me, in the wind, I hear it in footsteps, I hear it in the chatter of children. For me, the music has always been there, I just need to figure it out. My most psychotic days are the days where I perform at my best, the days where I totally lose myself in the music and can express everything that I'm feeling in an audience. Composers throughout history have had similar, although often far more serious, experiences than I have. Peter Tchaikovsky, the famous Russian composer, would conduct with his right hand, while literally pressing down on his head with his left, because he believed that the moment he stepped up onto that podium, his head would fall off. A chronically depressed alcoholic, music was his only solace. As he put it, without music, I would go insane. Robert Schumann, for disorder. During panic periods, he would compose countless pieces without sleeping. But during those periods, he was so plagued by auditory hallucinations, only could he not function. Yes, Mozart, probably the most beloved composer on the history of this planet. The man was known for his ability to compose pieces in his head while playing billiards. But the man that people said was taking inspiration from God also suffered from both Tourette's and Asperger's syndrome. Life of substance abuse and with foul language, the man titled, Lick My Arse. <laughs> Saying all composers suffer from mental illness so badly that they can't function. Rachmaninoff suffered from dehypilidating depression earlier in his career, but went on to lead to recovery. His second piano concerto is dedicated to the psychologist that he credits with his recovery career as a composer. Many composers, such as the likes of Haydn, Bach, and Vivaldi, that seem to have composed just fine without mental illness. What I want you to think about is this. Is it true, as the Roman philosopher Seneca said, there is no great genius without madness? Or what if genius and madness aren't as far separate as we think? Is mental illness really illness? Or is it merely that thinking so that as parents, teachers, and friends don't exactly know how to handle it? In my experience of dealing with schizophrenia, I've been off of multiple medications, each time with negative physical 
and psychological effects. One of the most noticeable effects was how it affected me with music. On medication, there are certain instruments that I could not even play. Since I could play, I could barely play. I couldn't write music for months. I made the decision to only go off of medication just over six months ago. And I still haven't returned anywhere near I, where I was as a musician. And to be totally honest, I don't think I ever will. We live in a country where over 15% of the children in public schools are on methylphenidate, commonly known as Ritalin. That's over 6 million children. Methylphenidate used to treat ADD and ADHD, along with the psychostimulants used to treat conditions such as bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and Asperger's syndrome function by effectively cutting off most of the right portion of the brain, the creative portion. The side that we need to do things such as music, art. I was as affected as I was. Starting on medication at age 18, how affected are these children going to be that were starting on medication before the age of 10? I often hear people hypothesize about how many Mozarts, how many Einsteins, how many O's we will never have the opportunity to know because of the Holocaust. I often wonder that same thing about the youth of America. Thank you.